The rules of the game are changing for designers around the world. And global design firm IDEO have been working with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation on a go-to resource for designers to get to grips with the circular economy. Now's your chance to get a sneak preview of what they've been working on. Welcome back to the Disruptive Innovation Festival, the three week long online event that asks the question, the economy is changing, what do I need to know, experience and do? So with the rise, the rise of the internet of things, a preference for access over ownership and the ubiquity of the mobile web, some firms are beginning to adapt to a new way of doing business. Product and business designers need to move with the times and understand and capitalize on these economic and societal shifts. So is the next big thing in design circular? Today we'll be joined by two people who certainly think so. It's, it's Chris Grantham, the Circular Economy Portfolio Director for IDEO, who leads IDEO's work with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Chris has worked with organisations on systems change and breakthrough innovation. He'll be joining us on the line from the studio in London. And Simon Widmer, Project Manager of New Plastics Economy Report at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, also working on this design guide with IDEO. And Simon, I've got here that you usually beat your colleagues at board games. That's a key part of your bio. Yeah, yeah, that's like one of my priorities, one especially the, the, the Scottish uh, colleagues. Scottish yeah, colleagues yeah, yeah. usually suffer. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Thanks for being with us today. It's, a, it's an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, Chris, we, we'd like to start with you um, and uh, finding out a bit more about this this project that you've been working on with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and IDEO. Um, so it's a guide for designing for circularity, as I've got in my notes here. But how would you describe the actual concept of this guide and the role that design thinking plays in it? I know design thinking is, it runs through everything that IDEO does. How, how has this come about and, and what are the overlaps there? Yeah, the, um, the, I mean, the, the original sort of uh, thought really came out of a sort of natural, it seems to sort of naturally come out of, uh, I think, the, um, the excitement really around the role uh, IDEO could play in, in, in working with uh, the foundation to really think, around, really think about, you know, how do we encourage designers and innovators to start to um, engage with this kind of really complex sort of systems change? And I guess the, um, the, the, the exciting thing about design thinking is it offers a a um, you know confidence building approach, uh, an iterative approach that allows us to you know start with something you know within our within our sort of uh, uh, field of kind of control and uh, really begin to kind of experiment and start to ask some 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 interesting and, and, and different questions and so um, and, and and build and then build our insights and build momentum um, uh, but by starting kind of small and then and then really looking to sort of strengthen our our, our insights and approach. And, uh, through an iterative approach, so the design design thinking, I guess, um, is a really useful uh, a kind of process and, and, and mindset for starting to kind of approach uh, approach kind of complex and thorny, uh, challenging change issues. Um, and I think really what we've tried to set out in this guide is is not so much uh, a thing that can make you a, an expert in that, but more. A, a, um, a, 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 an invitation to start asking some different questions around um, around value creation. Um, indeed, even some different questions around what 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 value businesses will need to create in the future. You know, so um, thinking about different ways that uh, you know financial capital can be generated uh, by by uh, by asking some different questions around uh, you know and employing sort of looking at sort of circular business models, but also thinking about you know. Um, Design as a as a, as a regenerative uh, a kind of um, process as well, and thinking about the the social you know the social capital, the human capital, the different forms of capital that innovation in the future will need to uh, create for businesses for them to be successful in the long term. So we're really just trying to inspire designers to start to ask some different questions, um, using design thinking as a way to start to try to. Um, 
design and, and implement um, circular innovations and circular uh, business models. Um, so, um, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's, um, there's, there's a, a, some series of sort of methods in here, but, but also the, the, sort of the, the, the first part is really, really important where we set a tone with the narrative, which is really trying to connect to the things designers find exciting about making new connections in the world and, and, and moving their thinking forward. Thanks, Chris. And as we find out more about this design guide for the circular economy, uh, I'd invite you, the audience at home, to send your questions and thoughts, comments in, uh, then we can put them to Chris and Simon later on in the session. There's two main ways to do that. You can use the comments section. It's just below the, uh, the live stream that you're watching us on now. Uh, or you can use hashtag thinkdiff on Twitter and we'll be looking out for those thoughts coming in. Have you used other design guidelines in the past? How are you approaching, approaching design in this perhaps more uncertain future with, uh, with all the different trends we can see going on today? We'd love to hear from you, so don't forget to chip in. Um, Chris, just uh, a little bit more on the kind of history and background of, of this guide. Um, I understand it came in part from uh, work that, that the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and IDEO started around plastics, around this new plastics economy report. Um, so if you could tell us just kind of a little bit more about that element of it and, and how we got to where we are and maybe where we are in the overall process. Absolutely, yeah. So um, the, the, uh, yes, the, the initial thinking you know, came from, uh, you know, I guess one of the more, you know, the more complex um, design challenges we have, which is in the plastics economy, to imagine a new kind of uh, a new kind of circular plastic system, a, a plastics economy that works uh, for the long term, um, that isn't uh, you know full of such negative uh, consequences in terms of environmental impact and, and such a risky system attached to uh, you know finite um, uh, natural resources. So. Very, very thorny challenge, and you know, very much a sort of uh, epitomizes the, the sort of the hard work that needs to be done to to to, to in, in in transitioning to the circular economy. So it felt like a, an, an area where we could, you know, start to, um, you know, it, so it inspired us to think about how could we create a tool which connects a, you know, the designer and innovator who's very much been focused on sort of like the the microcosm of their design challenge within their business, within their particular part of their business. Um, and if we're going to make them um, effective designers for the circular economy, effective innovators in the circular economy, how do we connect them out from the, sort of the microcosm of what they're doing to understand the need to build a system around their innovation that can, um, if it's a circular innovation, that can support that innovation. So, um, and you know, this is all at different scales, but it's an important principle that we could create a tool that helps designers to be a little bit more bifocal a little bit more zoom in and out in the design task. So not only create the thing or the service that they, that they want to, to create to solve a, to solve a business problem, uh, you know, or you know, and that could be creating better experiences for their users or, 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 or business partners, whatever it is, but think about what is the system they need to also enable that, that innovation to actually be, uh, to, you know, to, to, to be de de deployable and deliverable. So thinking about the, you know, the incentives uh, for, for all sorts of stakeholders within, within the, the system that supports their, their business, thinking about the, the infrastructure they might need for more circular flows of, of data and materials, uh, really thinking about you know, the needs of a, a broader system of, of users and usages. Um, so, so trying to kind of think, help designers think um, you know, systemically uh, as, well as, as well as just around the kind of products and services that they need to develop. Uh, is, is, has been a sort of huge part of what we try to um, address with this with this design guide, uh, and and you know that very much came out of that that kind of really thorny challenge of of, of the plastics industry, where designers need to think more systemically and learn to um, and learn to, to to think about not only their own business systems but the industry systems that they may need uh, to 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 work with others to to, to create. So it's just trying to sort of um, Change the change the horizons, I guess, of of, of design to to, uh, to an extent, um, and, and and the end the the new plastics economy initiative was very much uh, the sort of uh, inspiration for that. Um, so um, that's kind of what we've what we've uh, a little bit about what we've been aiming at. But it's it's very very early in the process. We've actually been um, only really um, putting this guide together now for about eight weeks. Um, 
the uh, we're very much in a, a stage of you know so we're running our own design thinking process to develop the the guide um you know we, we we're aiming to launch it um at the uh, at the towards the towards the end of january or in the, in the early part of next year mm-hmm. and um we're, we're very much in a kind of prototyping phase at the moment so engaging with the different um the different the groups of innovators that we that we really want to inspire. So working a lot with um, universities, particularly postgraduate programs, from some of the, the newer sort of MBAs, such as the ones sort of at Exeter, to some really interesting uh, design um, masters courses in design from RCA and, and, and Cranfield, and really uh, working with students who are equipping themselves for this more interdisciplinary world of of of, of, of circular of circular design and. Uh, and, and seeing if it has application within those interdisciplinary projects that they get set now on, the, on their kind of courses, because that, that that kind of will be a key key part of whether we can effectively mm-hmm. get them to act as systems designers. So working with um, universities a lot at the moment to prototype the tool and then give us feedback, but also uh, business businesses uh, within the plastics economy, uh, and again, um, as much as we can in, in, in cross value chain or, or and or pre-competitive kind of initiatives to to to, to see how we can support um, so to support those efforts with 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 these kind of methods and, and mindsets. And Chris, and also oh. um, and also um, the not just the not just the business groups, but also sort of entrepreneurs and, um, uh, and 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 these networks that exist between companies like the League of Entrepreneurs. So we're going through a prototyping phase at the moment, and then uh, we'll be making another sort of set of iterations to the to the to the guide. Um, as, as we move forward uh, for, the, for the rest of the year. Thanks, Chris. I, th- I think that's uh, an appreciating that um, the guide isn't out yet. Can you give us a bit of a sneak peek into what's in it? I know you've got some, some uh, maybe some screenshots that you could share with us, uh, a couple of yes. slides that you could, so you could give our online audience a bit of an insight into what this guide consists of. Absolutely. Are you able to see my slides at the moment? I think yeah, I think we I think we've got them on the screen now. Okay, so um, so the, the there are there are really um, and this is this is sort of all very much in, in sort of a fluid uh, fluid uh, sort of beat of sort of prototype at the moment. But as I touched on earlier, we 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 really try to sort of set a powerful introduction. And um, uh, as anyone involved in the circular economy will know, it's really it's really um, it's a really challenging area to to sort of storytell around because. Um, you know, it's it's very easy to sort of slip into sort of uh, reductive linear sort of thinking and, and the, around the way you sort of tell that story. Uh, and we're also very keen to, uh, at the same time as saying that, you know, uh, we understand the importance of trying to loosen mindsets. Um, but you know, how uh, how do we do that in a way that also relates to, to where people are? So we try to talk to in this sort of narrative. You see that we describe it as a, as a website that sort of headlines itself at the moment with. Design the future: a guide to designing for, for circularity. Um, and in that introductory uh, uh, section, uh, we also really talk to the designer's mindset around. You know, uh, there are, there are some huge disruptions happening in the world, and and and, and really, you know, as you as a designer, you need to be sort of riding the, the, these waves. And actually, the economy is is becoming more circular in many ways. You know, through um, through the Internet of Things, allowing us to. Uh, for example, understand so much more around what materials are in are in flow in the system, where they are, what condition they're in, what they can be used for even in the future in a much more uh, sort of automated and intelligent way. So the economy is already beginning to bend and become more circular in, in, in many ways. And I think we have an opportunity to sort of harness that 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 momentum and, and really use it for you know the the, the benefit of creating a a, a, a more um, you know a more uh, you know, an economy and a, and a system that works for, for, for the long term. So, world to meet human needs, that the designer's instinct, sorry, to bend the world to meet human needs. Uh, you know, in 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 a in a way that works, uh, uh, in a, in a way that works for the long term. In this case, of course, and um, you know, help really try to inspire them around this idea of being able to ask some new questions around value creation, because of course, um, you know, many businesses are really sort of. Uh, is struggling with the, with the, 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 the speed of disruption and, and, and also uh, you know being able to get to breakthrough innovation is, is increasingly uh, difficult and challenging. So we're trying to inspire designers that this could be a tool that can help them with that with that um, challenge of sort of value creation. And I think what we're trying to do is is really um, ask some questions of the, of the of the viewer, if you like, of the user of this guide, 
and not sort of say, right, this is the way you should be thinking and th this is what you need to do from A to Z in a very, um, in a very sort of linear way, in a very sort of prescriptive way. But how can we fire off different, um, different sort of parts of the brain uh, to th by, by asking some questions, by asking some questions around, you know, what a regenerative model might mean for their business, you know, if it was able to create uh, 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 you know, financial capital for the long term, but also in, in a way that works for, uh, for society and in, in a way that works for all the other businesses in their ecosystem. So starting to just say, oh, you know, if you ask these questions around value creation, you can get to some really, really interesting places. So it's, it's starting to fire off some nodes without trying to sort of say, this is the way you need to think. And that, that's easier said than done. And that's why we're experimenting quite a lot in the tone around the sort of narrative introduction. You know, how do we create something that feels exhilarating and exciting, but without sort of giving it all away and without saying this is really how you need to think, but just asking some questions that allow people to start to experience a more systemic mindset. And as I said, that's easier said than done. And I don't pretend that we've necessarily uh, cracked that yet um, at all. So, we're, so not, we're not talking here about uh, a, a checkbox, a, a to-do list, you tick the boxes and you've got a, something perfectly designed for sure. a circular economy. That's, that, mm. That isn't what this is. Exa exa exactly, Joe, yeah, it's, it's exactly that. I think, you know, we need people to be sort of adult in the way they use this, you know, using it, uh, you know, being prepared to sort of dive in and find the tools that work for their tasks. You know, we can't, we can't sort of, um, you know, prescribe uh, exactly, you know, how it should be used by everyone coming from many different kind of contexts in terms of how they'll need to use it. But, you know, if we go back to our kind of goal of, of, of really trying to start people along a journey, uh, start people along a road of asking some different questions around the business they might be in, the business, you know, that what, what other systems can they connect to? Uh, what other ways of thinking about value creation could they employ? Um, you know, what happens if they start to think about uh, their business in the context of the world? Um, you know, that, that's, that's a very, very powerful kind of creative direction to start going in. And that's why we think um, we can really bring designers on board as a, as a really powerful agent for change towards the circular economy. And I'm sure Simon might touch on this later because mm. it's very much an important part of the, the, the foundation and, and, and IDEO's own purpose and, and sort of theory of change for the world. Um, so, oh, um, and then there's, of mm. course, there's, I've, I spent quite a bit of time, I, I, I probably dwelt a little too much on the, on the narrative piece at the beginning, but it's so important, uh, you know, as a, as a part of the guide that we can, that we can um, excite people, open their mind, get them in that sort of creative space where they're starting to imagine possibilities and make connections, because that's mm. what, you know, we believe that systems design, when there isn't a roadmap, and there often isn't, is a cr fundamentally creative process. And that's the space we're trying to get people get people to. Um, so there's the, the, the huge body of the guide is, is, is a set of methods and um, they sit around a design process. Um, the design process, we've tried to uh, bring into more of the sort of framing around a software design process uh, in the sense that this is, you know, if we think of design moving from a linear to a circular world, then it's really key to think about the design process as being non-linear. So thinking of what we want to imagine as designers is rather than our job being done and sort of rubbing our hands and kind of walking away from the task once we've created something, but really thinking about that just being the beginning. And if we think of the, the uh, you know, a circular system being a series of very rich feedback loops, essentially, then we need to be thinking about how we're designing the product to fit within um, to fit within the larger within the larger system, uh, and also within um, a, a process of of, a, of receiving materials back, uh, you know, a, and adapting it, and that's where and adapting them, and that's where a lot of the value will be created in the circular economy. So, the way we describe the design process, I think we have, um, if I come on to that, um, uh, that we have um, define, understand, um, uh, make, and then release. So that'll be very familiar to design thinkers a lot of that process, but then the, the last stage of release is really inviting that iteration. So rather like we would an app, you know, inviting designers to think about the job never being done. It's like a, a beta release and looking for the opportunity for that next, you know, that next iteration and, and to continue to explore the possibilities of circularity for their, their business and organization. So, uh, and that, and that, I think we're going to evolve that process a little bit just to connect the context a bit here for designers. So showing not just the design process around the thing you're creating, 
but also how, as you start to spin that wheel and really improve the effectiveness of that design, and the, you, start to, you start to bring circularity and, and feedback uh, to the, the overall system context that you're operating in. And as you iterate one, you can iterate the other. Um, and the more projects you can then link to that system, rather like a sort of, imagine like a maypole, I suppose, with different Morris dancers spinning around it, mm -hmm. um, you start to kind of affect, this, affect the, the wider system. And that's, of course, the bigger game here as well. So, so that process is trying to show, give the designer a, a sense of the, the type of design exercise. And then within that, there are a whole series of, of methods that can help people come up with circular ideas, or understand, first of all, maybe even where they where they or their business sits within the, the flows within their industry. So there's a lot of orientation methods. There's a lot of methods that help you uh, really think about um, the system context as well as your particular products and service. Uh, and then go through some of those really lovely design thinking steps of, of uh, you know, really empathizing and getting out there and understanding the user needs, but now in the system of uh, a broader system of users as well, of course really the, the prototyping process and now that line being a lot more blurred between the prototyping process and actually just releasing your your product but that same sort of prototyping mindset of, of come back and iterate and make it stronger so we're really trying to build in some of those key design thinking steps as well into the into these sets of into these sets of methods and that's that's really the core of the guide it's the sort of narrative that I think connects with the design mindset, or we're trying to, and then the methods that help you, um, that help you or project teams, you know, uncover the sort of system in which they sit, the the, the opportunities to make um, to create more circular value within that system by looking at different um, pr uh, material flows, data flows, new services, and then how to also, of course, engage people with those opportunities, which Chris. is another. Part. I, I, I'm, I'm just a little conscious uh, that we've got Simon here as well, and we're going to focus a lot more on the design guide throughout the whole session and, uh, and look at some of those methods and maybe their, their application, which is I know uh, is, a, is, a, is a key thing that our, our viewers are, are also interested in. Um, and we're having some great questions come in as well. So I, I want to make sure we save a bit of time uh, to get to some of those questions that the audience watching online are sending in. So we will definitely be coming back to you, Chris, to, to look some more at the design guide. But first, I'd like to uh, feature one of my favorite segments at the Disruptive Innovation Festival, one that we call Over to Lou, in which co-host <laughs> Supremo, Lou Walgrave, casts her eagle eye over the many, many other exciting things going on at the 2016 Disruptive Innovation Festival. Thank you so much, Joe. Great stuff, Chris. Coming up, we have no slides, but fortunately, I was a brownie. <laughs> So I have prepared automated and on demand. There have been those who have been brave enough to predict the death of the private motor car. So if you haven't had enough of Joe already, he'll be back at one o'clock this afternoon to discuss what some would describe as maybe the scary ramifications of such a development. A different path at three o'clock today. For some countries, lower and middle income, developing a robust economy does provide quite a few hurdles to overcome, but do these guys have an ace card up their sleeves? Our very own Seb Edgerton Reed will be back with us at three to let us know on the inside track of how they're coping. For catch up, last week we went back to see Vega, who are a Danish circular setup, creating and designing organic children's clothes for reuse for many kids and many families. We saw them last year, we went back to find out how they're getting on and it is brilliant news all the way. Make sure you go back and have a look and don't forget all of our catch up sessions can be seen right up until next Friday. While you're at it, don't forget to tweet us and get yourself a diff account. You can create your own calendar, add your own comments and of course be the envy of all your friends. Back to my esteemed colleagues, Joe, Simon and great work Chris. Joe and Simon noted the new Kia cuts looking very sharp. Thank you, Lou, as always, and a real pleasure hearing your choice picks from the rest of the schedule at the Disruptive Innovation Festival. So, Simon, we're going to come to you now. Um, I know a bit of your background on this has been around, uh, around the this, this subject of plastics, and you worked on the New Plastics Economy Report, as we heard at the start. Um, 
Design and plastics, uh, the, the design has been a, a crucial part of that work on plastics, as we heard from Chris, uh, who has also been part of that story. Um, I believe we do have a video from Marilu uh, Valente, who's a designer uh, and, and has worked in, in plastic packaging. She was part of the diff this year, uh, just a few days ago, talking about the shampoo bottle of the future. She's applied her own innovative design approach to rethinking this everyday product. Let's have a look at that clip now. If you're looking for to kind of exercise your circular brain, I would t pick a product. Can be that was uh, the other clip. We're going to save you that one later. We just teased it, but this is the one that we're after. <laughs> Enjoy. Thanks. And can you talk us through the the idea behind this, which is a. Um, it seems to be a, a kind of easy way to seal. So when I use it, I guess I, I put this into my hand and I, um, exactly. I, I get my little bit of shampoo in the morning and then I can, I can reseal it. Um, can you talk yes. us through, because this reminds me of a, of a plant. Um, exactly. what, what was the uh, design process that you went, went through to come up with that um, really innovative um, design solution? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So basically, uh, so the, the starting idea was to connect the body and the cup of the bottle. And then I, I basically, so the idea was that the cup and the body needed to be connected somehow. And so looking at nature, I came across a uh, carnivorous plant called the Nepenthes. And in the Nepenthes plant, uh, you have the, the cavity, uh, which is the pitcher. Uh, which ends in a uh, thin, flexible wood, which is usually uh, used to hang over branches. So in the same way, I basically interpreted uh, the pitcher as the container and then the, the flexible, thin element as the cup. And then I reversed the shape and then I, I basically came up with this um, bendable element which, uh, which functions as the cup. There's an example, Simon, of, of, a, of a designer who's already applying in that, uh, something as, as humble as plastic packaging. Um, so this is happening a bit already. Uh, you're familiar with that example through, through yep. the, your work yeah, on New yeah. Plastics Economy. Well. You have it in the studio. That is fantastic. Yep. Props. Um, can you tell us a bit more about circular design uh, and, and how it's been relevant in the New Plastics Economy work? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, Chris has already touched on, on the point. I think uh, plastics is a very good example of um, a very challenging industry. It's a highly complex system and you cannot design a product or a service in isolation. You need to think about the system. So when, when looking at plastics, we see many design challenges because it's, yeah, it, it, is, it is complex, it is interconnected. So it is, um, it is full of design challenges where we can get creative on and where we need to, to have um, yeah, new minds and new designers. Um, and that's just one example. Actually, I, um, I was with you actually at this conference, right, uh, talking about design challenges in the plastics industry. And um, you can, you know, you, you find so many of them. Actually, if you, if you start looking at, at the circular economy, you, you start to realize that you can you know, redesign almost everything, like business models, product services. Um, but one specific challenge I, I was introducing at that conference to designers um, is about plastic bottles, right? Because plastics bottles, um, I mean, you guys all, all know it from everyday use, they have a detachable lid, right? Um, and when you look at evidence in the new plastics economy report and, and the industry, you see that those lids are actually leaking, right? Those are the, the items that are very prone to leakage. You don't mean they're, they're leaking, you mean they're, they're being lost? Like they, yeah, yeah they, they kind of, they escape the system, okay. right? Because they are light or because they also have like a lower value. So you, you find them on you know, natural systems, for example, the ocean. On the beach. On the beach, yeah, to be, to be precise. Um, and, and the question really is, like, how can we redesign such an item as a, you know, like a plastics bottle so that it fits the whole system, right? And that we don't have these, uh, these leakable items. Um, so I was presenting this, and um, at the moment, clearly, there's no, no, no solution out there in the market yet, right? And three hours later, Murray Lou was on stage with, with the bottle. So it shows that... Um, that new ideas can really change, um, can change design. Um, it also shows that sometimes we can get inspiration from biomimicry, from natural systems. Uh, sometimes we can get inspiration from, uh, from software systems, from 
from uh, the new technology that we can embed, like data and intelligence into items to, uh, to overcome these, these challenges. And just to, to clarify, designers, uh, you might argue, have always been uh, a bit crucial. It's not, this isn't a new thing. Um, and I'm sure there are many designers out there who have, uh, have tried to address these sorts of plastics problems before, maybe use a bit less plastic, yeah. maybe make something that's made uh, biodegradable or something like that. Some of these solutions are out there. So, so what's the problem? Why do we need this? Why do we need a new approach? Well, yeah, there's there's many ways to look at this. I mean, like one one is just to look at um, how things are working out, and taking the example of the plastics economy, we can see very clearly that we that things are not working out, right? So we are not designing for a system that works. So I think the the new the new mindset and the the very exciting opportunity that we all have is to to see things within a system, right? To to um, going back to Chris's point, to to zoom in and out, like to both tailor your product or your service to the user to achieve, you know, to meet those needs, but at the same time also think what the role is of that specific item within like the broader system. And I think the beauty is that if we really look at this new way of designing for a future that works, that you know, there's so many opportunities to to redesign things. Um, so yeah, I, th I think that's for me really like the, the thing that, that I find very you know, exciting about it, that you can take any item and, um, um, and, and ask those circular questions. And I think those circular questions and this, this, um, this mindset is not yet, um, is not yet very, very anchored. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder for those of you at home uh, watching online, do send your questions in. We've got just over 10 minutes left with Simon Widmer and Chris Grantham. Uh, talking about how designers can shape the future. So don't forget, hashtag ThinkDiff on Twitter or uh, post your comments underneath this, uh, this live stream window uh, to send your questions in. We've got some good ones that I'll come to in a couple of moments. But Simon, just, just with you now, this circular economy, some of these, some of these ideas, circular economy, mm. systems thinking, they mm. can be, can you, can you for, the, for those people tuning in, maybe from more from the design or design thinking background, not so much the circular economy background, mm -hmm. can you give a, 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 an elevator pitch on circular economy? I'll well, put you I, on the spot now. Uh, yeah, no, it's, that's good. I mean, um, we, we are working on various uh, ways to make that very tangible as part of the guide. So very soon we'll have like a lot of exciting materials on that. Uh, and, and you, Joe, in particular, have, have done a very good pitch on that. Um, so there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up very soon. But in short, it's, um, I think it's really this, this, new, this, new, um, this new mindset of asking questions. And I think uh, a very um, nice illustration just uh, out, of the, out of the flow was, was given by Caroline. I think we have a clip on that as well, where she just takes um, a very common item like, uh, like the couch. I think she didn't even prepare that that, um, that um, speech in, in particular, but she was just asking questions around what happens with that product. In well, let's, let's hear it from Carolina herself, who has a nice little story about uh, a circular couch. Yeah. If you're looking for to kind of exercise your circular brain, I would t pick a product, can be anything, something you're working on, something you own, something you're sitting on, whatever it is, and use that as a starting point and say, okay, how can I take this product and turn it into a service? Let's say a sofa. You look at it and you're like, right, so what is it? What's the core need of a sofa? Giving people seating. Okay, so is it performing what it needs to do? Yeah, probably. Are people throwing it out? Yeah, probably. Why are they throwing it out? Maybe it breaks, maybe they don't like it anymore. Upholstery is impossible to do. So you might be like, oh, actually, interesting. Maybe I can de design a service that um, helps people maintain and repair the couch. Maybe they do it themselves, maybe someone else does it. Maybe my business is going to be upholstery 2.0 because no one cares about upholstery, but actually I can create a cool thing where you can change your couch out without actually changing the fundamental bits of it. You just change the way it looks. Um, and then when you go next level, you might want to think about the materials. Where do they come from? How's it been built? Can it be produced locally? So instead of selling a couch, I'm selling the blueprint of it and it gets produced locally. Um, you can start thinking about, okay, well, if couches and moving around to people, if I'm facilitating that, can I attach a story to it? Is it nice to know that this couch has been somewhere else in, maybe not in this form, maybe in another form, maybe someone famous once sat in it, did things in it, I don't know. So, Carolina used an example of a couch there. Simon, anything could have happened in that couch, oh. the one that you're sitting on. Is that, is, that an appealing, uh, is that an appealing aspect of circular design? I guess one thing that I take from that is that there, there's not one way to do it. There are 
endless ways to do it, which I guess is maybe a, a counterpoint might be that that doesn't actually make things much easier for a designer, does it? Um, you know, I, th I think it's actually, isn't it, isn't it beautiful? Like, you know, the fact that you can, it's a whole new world for you. You can, you can, you know, rethink things. So you can, you can start, and there's not like a, a fixed starting point or end point, you know, like as Chris said, like this is a, a continuous uh, design process. You can start anywhere. You can um, actually get started quite easily as, as Karen just showed. Um, so for me, this is more like you know a whole new field that opens than than something that um, um, this in a, a limitation in itself. Yeah. So uh, those videos, uh, Marilou, uh, catch that one uh, about the shampoo bottle of the future uh, as on the diff capture pages. And Carolina, that wasn't at the diff. She's also been working on this design guide mm -hmm. with IDEO, uh, and that that video will be part of the, the design guide when it comes out uh, late uh, next year. I want to bring in two questions that we've got mm. from the online audience. One for, for you, Chris, to start with from Alessio, who says, Which is, what's the challenge of the, de of the design researcher on the future of the circular economy? More service or product oriented? Um, so what's the, how, does the, how does the design... Uh... I guess one, one, way of, one way of rephrasing that might be that we think a lot about about products, and um, when we think about design, I think people uh, immediately switch to nice milled aluminium shiny things. But we're not just talking about products here. Is is the real is the next boundary around this this service service flip as you call it? Yeah, absolutely. So so yes, yeah, so the design research task, I guess, um, does change. I mean, um, you know, I think the the I think the the service design task is actually one that's uh, perhaps historically been more attuned actually to the sort of the design task the design research task in the circular economy in the, in the sense that the the you know it's, it's now you know the, the established practice around service design is very much you know build essentially a, a, a feedback loop and you know allow allow the allow the the, the 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 service touch points to kind of produce the feedback that allows you to keep keep you know improving your service to somebody so that's a that's an established kind of a mental model in the in the service designer and I guess we are sort of saying yes it's more of that that model now in, 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 in product design and our ability to sort of test those designs so you know thinking about product design now plus the system so how do you instrument that design so that you can build the the the, the, the data loops the feedback loops around that material that allow you to potentially enhance its performance for a particular user or, or for the system at large so that 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 idea of, of kind of thinking about the, the sort of the feedback loops you need to sort of build in to allow the 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 the, 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 the system then to produce the feedback uh, that you need is is definitely part of the design research uh, task but I think you know fundamentally I just want to make the point before I, 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 I don't go on too long is that you know the idea of empathy which is at the heart of sort of human centered design process is still fundamentally important here. We might talk more in the language of systems, and maybe we should, shouldn't, but you know, we're still talking about a system of users and usages, and really understanding, talking to the other businesses that will, that will, that will use the material that you produce, that may be in totally different industries, and, and, and really understanding their needs uh, in the way that we would do with traditional design research around you know, uh, 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 getting up close and personal with, with, with traditional end users is, is still vitally important. Those skills of empathy in, in circular design are, are fundamentally important. So the, des the design research task changes a bit, but um, keep, the, keep the fundamentals uh, around empathy. Thanks, Chris. We've got um, only a few minutes left, but some great questions coming in at the last few uh, moments. Uh, John says, uh, and this perhaps for you, Simon, mm. I agree that systems thinking is very important for mm. facilitating circular economy solutions. But as the designers' tasks become broader, and we've we've spoken mostly about designers during this session, um, John says designers will need more help. Will the guide help uh, broach how to develop connections and foster collaboration? Yeah, absolutely. That's actually one specific method that we have on, on, on the guide as well. Um, so we do have uh, around 24, 25 methods um, on individual parts of, of those challenges, right? And we want to assist um, people to understand both like the empathy side, the human centered design, uh, side of the coin and then the systems uh, side of the coin as well and I think there, there's various um, um, methods and, and, and questions that you can ask yourself and the guide will help you for example John um, to, um, to explore like what are 
you know, new partnerships, maybe unexpected partnerships. For example, in the plastics industry, just to give one example, you, you know, traditionally you would produce like a bottle, right, for you, you who drinks the, or who uses the shampoo, right? But now maybe you want to build partnerships also with the after-use sector, so people who collect and recycle, uh, with the producers. You might even, uh, you know, want to have partnerships with uh, technology companies like uh, IBM, Watson, and so on. Mm -hmm. So like there, there is something on that definitely in the guide, yeah. And uh, I guess that follows on nicely that um, another question we've had in from Circle247, someone very committed to the uh, concept of circular economy, yeah. clearly. Yeah. What about businesses that already offer services or non-material products such as energy or telecommunications companies? Can the guide help them to become and contribute to more circularity or is that a different story? And I guess yeah. the, the big point there is mm. we've heard how this guide has come from the work or, or emerged from the work on a tricky problem like plastics, mm. but how versatile is it going to be? Mm. Um, can it be applied to any sort of sector? Chris? Mm. Yeah, I, I, think, I think this is why adopting a systems perspective uh, is, is, is so important. And perhaps, you know, being able to sort of think in systems is maybe the most important outcome of this guide in, in the sense that, you know, you should be able to use this guide also to think about, uh, you know, to, to think in flows. So if I'm in a, in a, in a store, any sort of services business, you know, how can I be an enabler of circularity? It's, it's essentially the questions aren't really that different from being a, a kind of product business. So if I'm, you know, enable, if I'm able to, uh, you know, a, 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 maybe a different role, a different parts in the value chain, enable uh, data to flow and, and, mm -hmm. and, and enable that data to kind of build value for other businesses, you know. Um, I think that's one of the wonderful things about the systems mindset once one starts to sort of uh, incorporate it into the thinking is, there's a lot of serendipity as you start to, it allows you to start to question what business you're really in and connect to, to other systems that you're, you're, you're a part of and maybe never realize. And so if you're in the, the, the data business or the services business, you can be a huge enabler for circularity. Um, you may be at different points in a value chain than you were before, but you can still play an amazing uh, enabling role. Uh, even if you're not a, a materials uh, producer, you, you, you're still fundamental to the system. And, just, and Chris, just before uh, we, 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 in the last few minutes, um, can you just remind our, peop our viewers watching at home, what's the next few months hold? When, remind us when the release date is and, and how people can, can start accessing all this great information. Yeah, so we, we are aiming to, to launch it um, towards the end of January. Um, you know, and, the, and the idea is that this is, uh, this is the start of a, of a conversation that, that uh, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and IDEO you know, want to hold uh, with the innovation community out there, and there will be, we hope, uh, other other versions of um, you know, ca you know, capability building resources. That's a very dry way of putting it. That that we will be producing in the future, whether that's perhaps looking at uh, forms of accreditation for, for professionals, or or looking at um, you know, maybe even you know, how do we how do we create that mindset flip within the C suite? There's there's lots and lots of things we'd like to do, and I think. What we want to do, though, is get this out there, uh, start to have people use it, and get the get the get the practice feedback. And that's another, I think, key area for this guy particularly is how can we really start to aggregate practice experiences and make this a tool that really uh, t you know learns from the, the 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 user kind of community in in, in mm. the long term. Thanks, Chris and Simon. Uh, any last word from you on if people are are enthused and excited about this new way of approaching design? What can they do now? They've got a few months to wait before they get their hands on the guide itself. Is there anything they can do now or they've just got to sit in suspense? Uh, no, no, of course not. I mean, first of all, I, I really encourage everyone to, to sign up to our uh, channels, the Twitter channel from EMF and, and IDEO, because then you will be the first ones to actually uh, be informed about the launch. Um, I think, I think it's, it's very interesting also to exercise this mindset that Caroline has, has described and apply it already to your own context. Um, and then, but also I think the, you know, giving us more, more of, of feedback. I mean, feedback loops are so important in, in circular design, as Chris has mentioned, giving us some feedback and ideas of um, how you personally apply it. So like success stories, uh, case studies that you want to share with us. Um, so yeah, please, please uh, um, let us also know about, uh, about those, uh, those uh, and on your own context, yeah. Thanks, Simon. And thank you, Chris, for joining us from uh, the IDEO studio in London. So there you have it. There's a few months to wait before you can get your hands on this new design tool uh, from the IDEO and the Ellen MacArthur Foundation on the circular economy. 
but there's no reason not to start now. And do, as Simon says, get in touch with us uh, on Twitter, Facebook, or on through the diff to let us know how you're applying the circular economy in your own design approaches. As Lou pointed out earlier in her fascinating segment about the rest of the schedule at the diff, there's loads to see, especially on the subject of design. So head to the schedule, uh, filter by topic, look for the design sessions, and you will not be disappointed about how many fantastic things there are to see. But for now, thank you for joining us at home at the Disruptive Innovation Festival, and we'll see you next time.